G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you and what an exciting day for Nikon it is today. Joe, how are you going? Fantastic today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, here we are. I feel like I feel like we are somewhat uh, kind of commentators, like we're watching an epic sporting event and the, the mighty titans of the camera world are slugging it out. And Nikon here has just kicked goal for the Nikon team with the Z8, a massive goal. We think it's a good goal, don't we, Joe? Definitely not an own goal. No, it's not an own goal, that's yep. for sure. It's not an own goal. Um, no, I, it could almost be a, like a double goal. If we're, if we're talking soccer or football, if you happen to be in the UK, it's almost like two. It's like you've scored the goal and they give you the penalty afterwards or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about soccer to really talk about. So I don't really know enough about football games in general. <laughs> Let's talk about cameras. That's what I do know about. Welcome, everybody who's here. It's so good to see you all. Uh, the Z8 absolutely huge and this what why we're going live is because i've had a good amount of time with the z8 and it's absolutely blown me away i've obviously had 18 months with the z9 you've had a year or more with the z9 yeah just over a year i think and um the z8 is a z9 and and <laughs> and in a much smaller package with a smaller price it's very exciting i'm very excited by it so yes, tonight we're going to answer your questions, and we're going to answer. I'm going to answer Joe's questions as well. So get the questions down there in the comments below. I'll have to get my glasses out just just so everybody knows if if I drop drop <laughs> I fall asleep, it's because it's almost midnight here. Uh, g'day Chuck, great to have you here. Um, yeah, you should have stalked the Balti Bridge. Exactly right, Tim. Absolutely right. So, yeah, any if anybody's got any questions at all about the Z8, Joe, why don't we kick off with your questions? Okay. First one is what do you think this means for the industry as a whole? Oh, gosh, that's a, that's a big question. Yeah, just something small. That's an epic question. By the way, everybody, can you just give me a thumbs up if the sound is sounding okay? Uh, you know, we've always got to check these things. Did you get the back? Did I get to use the battery grip? Yes, absolutely. I got to use it. Sorry, I'll answer your question first, Joe. <laughs> oh just, no, no. Actually, I, we'll 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 get we'll get into that a bit later. So yeah, yeah. talk about the battery grip. Oh, absolutely. the battery grip. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so the battery grip is really cool. Uh, it feels pretty similar to the Z9, as you would have seen in my video. Which, if you haven't watched it yet, check it out after we finish here. It does make the Z8 slightly taller, but it feels about the same weight. And it feels about the same. So I'm I'm a fan of the battery grip. I think it I think it works well. Um, G'day Baron, great to see you here. Carlos, great to see you. Taipei Geek. Wow. Oh, thanks, Taipei Geek. Yes, well, I, I appreciate that very much. Um, great to have you here. Geek, if you've got any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, Guy, good evening to you in Australia. Well, good evening to you, Guy. Thank you so much, Photo Discourse. Now, we'll go back to your question. Can you ask your question again, Joe? I'll ask a different question. I'm always going to ask a different I'm going question. To ask just a different just, to, just okay. to confuse me. I like the Nikon hat on or off. Let us know. So, your next camera purchase. Oh, yeah. Is it going to be another Z9? I oh, am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a Z8? No, yeah. And what's the reason? Yeah. Now, I like the idea of having two different sized cameras with exactly the same sensor. Like, for me, I've... Uh, since since the D3 and the D700, I've always had two cameras with the same sensor. So th from there, I went two D800s, two D810s, and then two D850s. And so I've been super happy with that. So so for me, I love the idea of having uh, yeah. the same sensor. It's going to look exactly the same, perform exactly the same. So, but it's good to have the option to kind of have the, the bulletproof yep. Z9 version and have the more Schwelt. Love that word, Schfeld, uh, Z8 version. So that's that's how I'm going to roll, I think. Yeah. So, and, and right off the bat. Oh uh, yes. What was your, um, what was your shooting experience of the Z8 Z8 compared to the Z9? Identical. Un, like, I, I was almost speechless by the fact that the the Ibis was identical. You know, things that you thought you, you might think might change a little bit because you're in because it's in a smaller body yeah. um no the experience was the same and and that kind of blew my mind so one of the things that that you mentioned to me uh, along the way was uh the evf oh yeah experience what can, can you talk a bit about 
what that was? Yeah, well, I went back and looked at the Z9 and then in the end decided they actually are the same. <laughs> and I was just I was just so excited. Uh, look, I, obviously the uh, the Z8 that I had is it's had to go back unfortunately. Uh, and so I we can't test that now, but um yes, there was a, there was a few moments there where I thought not the pixel resolution was better, but somehow the glass between the little miniature screen and my eye was even more refined than the Z9. That's the sort of feeling that I had, but mm. I'm, I'm not sure that that ended up being the case. I might have just been super duper excited. What else? Have, who, what have we got? What well, have we got? Hello, people. How are you all? Well, I've just looked up and I've just glanced that uh, Guy Yell has said something very interesting. Oh, yes. I would miss the GPS. I didn't realise that the Z8 didn't have a GPS. Yes, that's funny. Um, can I say there's been a lot of specs to get through in the last week or so, and I I thought about the GPS but never drilled into finding out whether it did or didn't have it. So good point to call that out. It hasn't been talked about. It wasn't in my video because I forgot to think about it. Um, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I thought I'd love the GPS in my Z9, but I have ended up not really using it, but... Now, can't you, through SnapBridge, when you're shooting, yes. have it record the GPS locations when you're when think, taking photos? I, I think you can. I think so. I think so, you can. Thank you, Joe, for that one. That's so a good one. It, so if you've got a real issue without the GPS, just put your iPhone in your pocket, if you've got an iPhone, turn SnapBridge on, and Nikon send me $6,000 for getting that sale across the line. <laughs> 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 I, I, think, I think that's how GPS um, can work with Snap. Snapbridge. G'day, so. Oz Baz from Adelaide. Great to have you with us late late at night, although it's not quite so late over there. Uh, no, J-Rod, I don't still have the Z8. Uh, it had to go back uh, about two days ago. Um, yeah, you're staying with your Z9. Bubba, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love to have identical... I love to have identical sensors... Identical cameras is a little bit easier from an ergonomic perspective, Guy, but I think the fact that all the buttons are this in exactly the same spot, uh, obviously the vertical buttons aren't, but everything else is. Uh, I found, like, I'm very, very familiar with the Z9 and I found using the Z8 to was just, automatically it worked. So, uh, and of course, the only thing that I missed was obviously there is, no vertical grip if you're shooting without the vertical grip and you know that that's that's what you pay for that's part of what you get when you buy a z9 is a vertical grip so that's you know i don't think we can complain about it not being there because then you go buy the z9 uh, one one of the other one of the other things that i thought that i ask you is is what you think the z8 means for the industry this is what i oh yeah and, okay. and i'm going to break it up a little bit yeah break it up and it's uh, late remember just break it up to oh, <laughs> <laughs> i'll make it simple uh, so what does it mean, for example, for uh, wedding photographers yeah. and, and videographers, also uh, guys doing um, uh, just any, any type of film work? Because ultimately this is, uh, this is a very high-end film camera in a very small box yep. that just happens to take remarkable stills as well. That, that's my impression. Yeah, so what will it do to the market? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. The video market or well, the skills market? Uh, the, the video market because, uh, you know, there are other people in the market like Sony and yeah. Canon. And Look, I think the biggest challenge is, is Nikon is not known in this space traditionally. And so now they've, they've started to move into this space. And uh, clearly the specification around NRAW, ProRes, uh, even the 8-bit, even the 8K 10-bit H.265 is really good. Um, so kind of the baseline is there. And then you have some uh, some filmmakers who just want a few other kind of actually really minor spec upgrades, yep. which most of it can be done via firmware. And the, the reality is if we've watched the progression of the Z9 through firmware, this, this is Z8, obviously... Firmware version one. I never actually looked at the firmware, but I'm sure it's version one. That makes sense. Mm. I, I think there's more to come in this space. And Nikon have said, have said that they really want to get into video. And you can't invent this stuff overnight. I think we forget the fact that Sony and Canon have been making 
video cameras and domestic video cameras since we were kids. Yeah. So we're talking 40, 50, maybe even more years. Nikon never really was. I mean, the closest they got is maybe the key mission uh, action cams, but I don't think any of that technology would have been brought to the Z series. So mm. to get into this higher level, video that's a lot of hard work and i think they're putting in the hard yards and and the basics are there and they can just simply be built on i genuinely believe that the xp7 processor has a lot more wriggle room there's a lot more that processor can do so i think there is processing uh overhead if that's the right word that isn't being used or processor capacity that isn't being used that's 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 what i think yeah yep yeah what 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 interests me as well about the the size and the shape of the Z8, 400 grams lighter is something that just jumps out at you straight away. Yep. That means that it becomes a more accessible camera for people running gimbals all day, mm. for uh, for even having uh, the camera mounted on to uh, to drones, to doing yep. the front of, of a car, the front of a car, yeah. all that type of work. Yeah, no question. I mean, it's a, it's an extraordinarily high quality camera for like if you think about 8.3k raw and i'm gonna i'll tell you in a second i did a test if this is an unofficial test but i was able to get 70 minutes of n raw in 24 frames per second so 70 minutes and this is internally from this little camera so the the only thing that i did was add an external battery uh as in running power through the USB-C port, but that's a minor thing to do. So it's just, for the price, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, howdy, Mozman. I saw you there in the comments. Good to have you here. <laughs> um, yes. So I think it's, I think for the price that you can be buying these these video units that will give you 8.3K raw, or you can shoot in 4.1 ProRes, which is amazing, 422, mm. and they're very affordable, very full, and, and full frame, and then you've got this amazing glass that can go with it all. So uh, Colin Skybar is asking, uh, when do you think it might be shipping into Australia? On oh, the camera? Yeah. I believe the launch date, I believe, is the 25th. So we've only got two weeks. It's, it's really quick. It's amazing. Um, jump on any of your local uh, websites, but I'm pretty sure that's the date that I saw somewhere. Um, G'day, Rakesh. How are you going? G'day, Tony. Great to have you here. I hope that, yes, and by the way, Tony, you're reminding me that um, Con and I had a chat before we both went live today, and Con and I both said that we would mention each other's live stream. So when, you, when you've got sick of our faces, you can jump over and see Con and Becky, and then you can come back as long as we've answered your <laughs> questions. So please keep those questions rolling. We'll do our very best as it heads on towards midnight here on the other side of the planet, depending on where you are. Duns has asked a very uh, good question about the battery spec. How long does the uh, the ENEL fifteen? Is it ENEL fifteen? Yeah, ENEL fifteen. C. 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 How long do they last? Um, if if memory serves, and look, you should we should never talk CEPA ratings. So basically, the experience I had was that one of those batteries is probably somewhere around forty percent. 40, 45% of what the Z9 will give you, which kind of makes sense. So if, if you have two of those batteries, you're getting 80, 90%, which, which I think is a great result. And if you're already in the Nikon ecosystem, I mean, I don't know how many ENEL battery, ENEL 15 batteries I now have, but I reckon it's something like 15. Yeah. Like it's a lot. So And they're tiny. And they're tiny, yeah. So no, no, battery consumption was was good. Um my standard shooting, so I, 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 the last time I shot with the Z8, I went out for four hours and I was still going on the one battery. Uh, and that's some of the shots that you can see in the rain in, in, the, in the video that if you haven't watched, go and watch it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. That, and I suppose I would call that casual shooting. You know, I'm mm. not shooting birds where you're shooting 3,000 frames in one hour, but, um, yeah. We've all got those batteries and they're pretty inexpensive. Yep. Uh, Roy's mentioned a, a great feature of the camera, which uh, Roy Bixby. G'day, Roy. Um, I do like the two USB ports. And before you get on to that, I was, oh, I, was, I was thinking about this because if you've got a, a USB port that is simply dedicated to data, 
I don't see why you can't just connect a USB hub up to it at some stage. So, in, well, <laughs> so, I have suggested that a while back, and I and someone went like this to me. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I, 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 I no, no, not like that. I, it's, I, <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. I mean, so, so let's talk about the two USBs ports because the, the, there's a few people asking about it. The, no. the reason I say this is because there's already hardware that utilizes a single USB port. So if you're then going to do hard disk recording and all that type of thing, I'm sure that Nikon are going to build an ecosystem that you can plug the single USB port into something, maybe, I don't know, this would be my wish, that you could then then have from that a um, controlling... Yeah, it's a hub, so you can have whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want to whatever plug you want. in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as I've speculated in my video, We've got two, with, there's two USB-C ports. One is, is literally for power delivery. And I tested this by plugging in the remote grip and into the power delivery port, and it didn't work. And when I plugged it into the other port, it did work. And so, so power delivery is literally just for power delivery. Now, whether at a later date that can be changed in firmware, who knows? My guess is it won't. The USB-C port, which we can see does Ethernet, uh, which which I'm guessing is a two-way conversation between the camera and whatever servers. And if anybody knows more about that, let us know in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure that's flowing in two directions. So this looks like a traditional USB port that we would find here on this laptop. And you're basically going into the onboard computer. You know, I've always said that this is a high-end computer with a, with a camera sensor on it. So let alone what else we might have that comes you know comes along that can go in and out whether it's audio whether it's flashes whether it's hard drive recording we, we just don't know what what else might happen um, you could even have, have uh, uh, different types of monitors connected through USB yeah. as well yeah who knows That's who, right. who, who knows I mean USB USB C high speed USB C can handle everything yeah like everything it's digital so who knows? Sky's the limit. It's up to it's up to Nikon and their desires in this space. I think. Yeah. yeah. A number of people have said that um, uh, that Gray's uh, stream has finished. Oh and, yeah, right. Uh, and apparently they've come across to watch oh. this stream. Oh so. well, welcome Becky and Con. If you're out there, um, I brought your beanie to put on and I've lost it. We're actually in a hotel in the city. You probably can't tell. We were going to do this outside, but it's it's Arctic. It's like it's not <laughs> right. it's not minus ten degrees, but it's all, all, almost that. And then Joe, who's uh, you know pretty uh, pretty handy, he managed to score us the foyer of a hotel, a five star hotel. So here we are. If we get kicked out a bit later on because we've been here all night, anyway. Con and Becky, sorry I don't have your beanie. I was going to swap it for anyway. I don't know what happened to it. Hopefully it's in my car. Um, how's everybody going? What's going on there? Let's see. Any more questions? Hello, Ambrose from Brisbane. Um, absolutely, Tony. Absolutely, the Z8 is a D850 replacement. Now, some people vehemently disagree with that concept, and I think it's because back when the D850 happened, the flagship was a D5, and so thus it should be higher megapixels. But to me, there's a lot more to the conversation than just high mega high megapixels. It's where it fits in the market. It's it's literally the size and the shape. Like there's so many things. And as I as I talk about as I've talked about a couple of times, and I've got another video coming out as soon as I get it out. The whole the whole idea of for me, the D850 was like the best all-rounded DSLR ever. And I think a lot of people agree with that. Like, so that's what it is. So let's just say that again. It is the best all-rounded DSLR ever. And part of that is the choice of sensor size. Mm. 45 megapixels. If you go, if you start to get bigger, diffraction starts to become an issue. File sizes become an issue. The the speed of all your I.O becomes an issue right so 45 and, and, and isn't it interesting that nikon now have four cameras at exactly the same resolution and that's because they've spent a lot of time <laughs> this doesn't happen by accident in, in wait, the, wait wait let me finish yeah, okay. they've spent a lot of time going yeah we think this is the optimal resolution for the ultimate all-rounder so 
it's a DA50 moment yep. because it's the mirrorless optimal all-rounder. That's, that's the reason. And keeping in mind that Nikon are just an optics specialist company. That's, that's all they do. They just do, <laughs> what you, what? They just do optics. <laughs> right. Right. So, so what, I mean, what I mean by that Yes, what is, do you mean by that? Is where you've got other brands that are, that are perhaps worried about marketing uh, to, uh, to a, a broader market, whatever it be, low end, high end, all that type of stuff. Nikon seem to be producing cameras that are uh, not catering to the, the whim of everyone saying we want 60 megapixel, 80 yeah, megapixel, sure, sure. 100. I see what you're saying. They're just producing the best quality that they know that can be produced and aren't, aren't being influenced by... So they are endeavouring for excellence. That's right. Is what you're saying there. Pure optics. Yeah. Because they make microscopes. Yep. They make yep. etching machines that we've yep. spoken about. Yeah. So I think... Um, I think good on them for sticking to their guns. Yeah. And 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 all the people that keep on saying that they want higher megapixel cameras, for, for what end? At, at this point in time, yeah, well, the I, physics isn't there. I will say it again. The difference between the, the Sony a7R5, which is not 61, it's actually 60.2 megapixels, I just want you to know, it's only 1,240 pixels. It's mm -hmm. only a 13% difference. So it, in, in the real world, it just doesn't give you that much more. Mm -hmm. so, so this is why it's the D850 moment. Not because it's got a bigger sensor than the D5 and the D850 had. Not for that reason, but because it's the consummate all-rounder. And if you then continue with that paradigm of it being the consummate all-rounder, think about the video spec that they've just added to this. Think of what the D850 was and video, and it really, it, it's fine, but... It's just got nothing. It's got nothing on a Z8 and what it can do video-wise. So it then becomes, five years later, the even more consummate all-rounder for the market. And mm -hmm. it's a stack sensor at this price. What? Yeah. What? I was looking at the price of the A92 just recently, and I think it's like the same price. And it's like, that's, I think, a 24-megapixel camera. Let me know in the comments below. Yep. That's, there's a lot of comments here. Sorry, people. Uh, we're not keeping up with you all. I'll ask you a question. I'll read the comments. Okay, you, answer you ask me a question. Great, okay. So a number of people have asked, why would they buy a Z9 when, now that the Z8 is on the market? Well, yeah, good one, good one. Um, welcome, Ray. Welcome, Verhagen. And just a few other welcomes before I answer that question. Uh, yes, well, welcome, everybody. It's great to have you here. Um, why would you buy, why would you still buy a Z9? Well, that's, that's very simple to me. And I'm glad you asked. The reason that I would still buy a Z9 is for, we already touched on one. If you kind of want that integrated vertical grip and you, are, you just want a camera that is the most robust, the most weather sealed, has the biggest battery and it's in there and it just goes, then, then that's, what this, that's what the Z9 is. That's what the flagships always were. And I, I love the fact that the choice between sort of having the vertical grip and the bigger battery or the Z8 is, is actually, it's quite a simple choice now. Like yep. back, back in the day, you kind of had to go, oh, do I want speed? Do I want the D5 and I want the, the fast camera? Or do I want the D850 and I want this a bit slower but larger megapixels? So I think, the, I think the choice is really simple. And there's definitely still going to be people that, that just, they want to go with the, the larger handling. For, for ex and of course, you can add the vertical grip. <clears throat> like I get that. I get that, and that's the yep. that's the advantage or slash disadvantage, depending on your viewpoint of a Z8. But obviously, when you're handling larger lenses, like for wildlife photographers, sports, you know, people who people like Morton, Morton yes. Hilmer, yep. you know, I don't think he wants to be messing around with a vertical grip. I just think he wants to no. he wants to put one battery in there. It's going to last half the day because he's just shooting nonstop, and he wants a camera that you can put it in any environment, and that's what the Z9 is. It's an absolute tank. So were the batteries in that, uh, in that vertical grip for the Z8, are they hot swappable? So the way it works is, is there's a caddy in there and the exterior battery is hot swappable, but the one on the interior is not swappable. Okay. So what, what happens is the one on the interior slowly goes down, but you, you'd be able to go, I suspect you'd be able to go more than 24 hours if you just 
kept hot, hot swapping the one on the exterior. Yep. If you had no external, I mean, this is the thing now. We're all we're all carrying we're all carrying this sort of thing around with us now, and these things are so powerful in such small boxes. And now we have these awesome cables. I can't I can't show you one, but I've got these lovely right angle cables, so you can make it all nice and schvelt. I don't know how well you can see that, but these right angle cables. So power is not really an issue now. You, you get a Z9 because you want that form factor and you, you want it to be the toughest thing known to man. And, you know, if you buy the Canon R3 or the Nikon Z9, you're probably buying the two toughest cameras on the market and that's all there is yep. to it. They're flagships. That's what they are. That's what they are. So uh, Roy Bixby mentions that he, he does like the, uh, the Ethernet port that's on the Z9. Uh, now, oh, we didn't talk about the two ports, did we? Really? Oh, did I? We did kind of. Uh, oh no, not we, enough. yeah, not enough. Get into G'day, it. G'day, Seth. Good to have you here, man. Um, tell us, tell us, Seth, in the comments what you think of the of the Z8. Write to people; they'd love to know your thoughts. Everybody would love to know what you think, because not many people have had a chance to get their hands on the camera yet, and you, sir, are one of the people that has. You might even have one in your hand right now, knowing you. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and I, I, I. I I think in London they had quite a lot of Z8s there for the launch. So there's probably a few people who were at that launch who, uh, uh, who've got their hands on them. And Becky and Con, please tell us what you think. Maybe you've had a chance to get your hands on the Z8 by now. But um, yes, what were we going to say? So oh, uh, with the two SUB, uh, yeah. USB ports yes. and the Ethernet port. Yes. Because I noticed in, in your video that you actually used a USB to Ethernet yeah. adapter. Yeah. And... That worked fine, I'm presuming. Yeah, well, I didn't. I didn't actually use it, but um, <laughs> they exist. Well, it's it, it works. Like it's it's absolutely a feature. So the Ethernet port that's on the Z9 is not not on the Z8, but the way you can still get it is to use this dongle. So a, a, again, the two USB C ports, I think, is is mm. is quite interesting, quite exciting, quite uncanny, and to me, it just says. We're delivering power, and now with this other port, we can just add as many features as we want over time. Yeah, and it can, it like who knows? We might get digital sound in. Like, can you imagine if there's like a little unit you put in your hot shoe, and there's just digital sound going straight yeah. in that way? Yep. I mean, there's people who would love that. Uh, and if we have, which let let's not talk, let's not call it a USB hub. Let's call it a USB C breakout box. <laughs> a breakout box that goes into somewhere and then yeah we could plug all sorts of stuff in so i think it's exciting and i just think we don't know yeah but i think it could go anywhere anyway let's have a look what else uh, have you got any more questions yeah I've, I've got a question just put a pin in that for a second <laughs> <laughs> all right good on you good on you seth thank you for sharing that um oh they had a z8 in the live stream that's awesome well this is as close as we're getting to a z8 this is a d850 and my next video is showing the actual size difference. So uh, this is a 24 to 72.8 and the D850 and the Z8 and it and the Z24 to 72. It's significantly smaller. So for those people that go mirrorless isn't any smaller, this whole package is about this much smaller. So it's really cool. Anyway, that's 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 our Z8 right now. Sorry, back to your question. A lot of uh, a lot of people have been impatiently waiting for a D500 replacement. Oh yes, because they they say, well, yes. the Z9 is too big. Of course, it's too this, I it's understand. too that. I understand. Well, all of a sudden, you've got yep. a camera that that uh, that fits the size requirements and yep. possibly even lighter than the D500. I, I'm not sure. I have. I'll, I'll check. No, that. no, it wouldn't be the Z8. Won't be lighter. Let me check. Yeah, I'll you check. you check. You you, you check. I'll, I'll check. He's while, our fact checker. I'll check while you um. Yeah, ponder. I will pontificate on that. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, look, even when the Z9 came out, I said, look, there's probably some D500 users that will go go for it because you've still got 19, I think it's 19.5 or 19.7 megapixels, almost exactly the same as the D500, and you just go into DX mode and you're getting the crazy speed. Mm. And that was at that price, fifteen hundred, uh, five and a half thousand US dollars. Now they've slashed. Fifteen hundred dollars off. It's it's a bargain. Fifteen hundred dollars yep. off. It's still obviously not as cheap as a D five hundred. I something in the back of my mind says a D five hundred was two thousand US dollars. So it's it's twice the price, but it's not three times the price, which is what the Z nine is. So 
I think for now, D500 users can go down that path and get some pretty state-of-the-art awesome tech. Yep. Um, I have no idea whether a Nikon D500 replacement is coming, but I will just repeat what I said recently, which was yes. we just have to look at how, uh, not us, but, well, no, we have to consider how big is that market segment and how many units are actually going to be sold. And we can see, we can clearly see that when it comes to these kind of flagship devices, mm. or, or even when they released the Z6 and Z7, they kind of started at the top and then they go down. So the Z6 and Z7 came out in that range, and then we went Z5 and Z50 and so on. Maybe they're doing the same thing here. So we'll have like Z9, Z8, yep. and who knows what a crop sensor stack, blah, 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 might be called. We've had a few names, haven't we? Like a Z500, yep. Z90. Let us know in the comments what other, you know, if, if, if they're going to follow sort of these patterns, and we do see these patterns, they, there are patterns. See, I like patterns. Maybe they like patterns as well. Then it's going to come maybe in the natural order of where it would come. So can anyone think of a camera that would come before it? It would be easy to argue that the D850, the D500, and the D5 all came out within roughly a year of each other. So, mm. yeah. Can you remember just off hand? The weight of the Z8. Yes, I can. It's 910 grams. How about that? Right. Well, the, the D500 was 860 grams for, wow. for a quarter of a glass of water. Wow. Um, Speaking of water, what a good idea. But, but keep, um, keep in mind that the lenses, the, the native Z lenses are generally lighter than the, yeah, the yeah. native uh, F mount lenses. But you're talking about a 70 gram difference. It's something that you won't even notice. So it's, it's nothing. So there you go. Look, it, it is an option. It really, because the body is probably a similar size to the D500. So that is yep. an option for people who might have thought, oh, I don't really want to get the Z9, but well, now the Z8 is an option. And who knows if something else is coming along. Let's have keep looking at these comments here. There's uh, lots going on. Any more questions, guys, about the Z8? Let me know in the comments. Ray, it's 5,399 Canadian. Good to know. Uh, how do how did, how did the Ibis compare? Ibis was identical to, so, the, Z, to the Z9. Z9. So, I, Ibis is identical it's and, and, and un, unreasonably good. So for those who haven't got a Z9 yep. and are perhaps coming uh, from, the D, from the F mount system or the D system or whatever, or a, an earlier body of a, a Z, a Z6 or a Z7, how do you compare Z6, Z7 Ibis to Z8 Ibis? Yes, yep. Um, it's better. I don't really have a metric for it, mm. but I would say that the Z8 can almost look like you're on a tripod. It yeah. can look at that still. Z8, Z9, you've got a Z9. So, so Joe knows yeah. uh, how good it is. The Z8's the same. Is it better? I, I don't know, but it's a little uncanny as to how stable the package is. Like, you'll put the 85mm 1.2 on the end of it, and you're shooting video, and I'll, I'll deliberately do these little micro movements just, just to test it, and it just it just hangs in there. So, very impressive. Yeah. Maldonite asks if uh, the Z8 uh, battery grip accepts the Z9 battery. No. So, that was my assumption as soon as I flipped it open. But no, it's it's the same style as the Z6 and Z7 and maybe the Z6 II and Z7 II. Never saw that vertical battery group. It takes two ENEL15 batteries. And it can take any of them, but obviously Cs are the most modern. Check out the video that I just dropped. It's all in there. That's a little plug for me about me, from me to me. You know, it wasn't in the video. Are the buttons illuminated yes, in the same way? They, they are. They are. They are, and it wasn't. I tell you, I thought I got everything, and there's a few things I missed, and there's another thing I want to share with you right now that I missed that I just remembered. Yep. So the Z8 officially has the capacity to have the, the a face in frame recognition the smallest in the world, and it yep. and and with width it's only three percent. So if a person's oh. face is three percent of the vertical width of the frame. It will see it. Now, strangely enough, I recorded that bit and just forgot to put it in. And it does happen. These videos are quite complicated and they take a long time. So are we expecting that that might be rolled out 
possibly in future firmware with anything with an X Speed 7, the Z9? Yeah, I would. I mean, I just, I'm, I think we are all aware of what Sony are doing right now and causing a great deal of pain for their users where much lower end cameras are getting much better features than their flagship. Uh, and yeah, no, I don't, I don't see that. Look, if I was the CEO of Nikon, I would be literally running these cameras in parallel as much as it's possible. That's what I'd do. So um, I'm hoping they do the same thing. Let's see. Let's hope we find out soon. Uh, Craig C has asked, or has mentioned there's no card door lock, lock. button. Yeah. So, Craig, when, uh, when the... I don't know, Z6 or Z7 first came out. Yeah, there you go. There's a, there's a D850. Doesn't have it either. See? Look at that. Look at that action. Hmm? Smooth. Uh, when the Z6, Z7 first came out, there were a lot of people that complained about how easy it was to open the door on these cameras by just kind of the way you hold them. Now... We're all different, aren't we? And I have never experienced my car door on my Z6 or my Z7 or my D850. I'd forgotten that it's the same. I've never had an accidental opening, not once. So I don't know. Maybe people are kind of spinning these things like they're a basketballer or I don't know what they're doing, right? Um, it doesn't happen to me. So I'm not worried about it at all. And I can only repeat we're all different and we all have different use cases. And not only do we all have different use cases, but we actually all have different usage styles there you go that's a new paradigm i'm now going to add to my list of paradigms but yes no i'm 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 not worried about it and in the in the time that i had the camera never an issue never an issue leo asks uh, what are the unique selling points of the z8 oh okay i'm going to put on my nikon sales hat uh i'll, I'll be looking forward to some commission no um uh unique selling points well do you mean unique versus the Z9 or just unique versus the whole market? Um, Let's go versus the Z9 first. Leo. Was it Leo? It was Leo. Leo. You can, and Joel let me know, but uh, versus the Z9. Well, smaller, lighter, cheaper. No question. All these things are true. It's 30% smaller, 30% lighter, and is it 30% cheaper? Gosh, it actually, it actually it almost is. So that's pretty cool. Um, Okay, and, and 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 I think the USB, the two USB C ports, is quite interesting. Other than that, they perform very similarly, and it's uncanny to me. It was uncanny holding this camera and going, "Wow, the Z 9s a beast, and this thing's a beast, but a smaller beast, but it's the same beast." Love it. So, what do you think about the SD port being the second, uh, the, yeah. the, the second, um, yeah, yeah, card slot? That, that's a great question. Um, we didn't answer the Z eight selling points versus the, oh, versus, versus the, the, the market. market. Oh, that's, well, it's just better. That's really what matters, right, versus the market. Um, versus the market. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if I was the R5, I'd be running for the hills right now. I'd be screaming. I'd, I, would. I would. I'd be running. And um, if I was the Sony A1, I'd be going far out. I need to slash my prices because essentially they're very similar cameras. And really the uh, Z8 is actually better, I think. And uh, we can make a video just about that. And especially with all these firmware updates that we've seen with the Z. Like, I made a Z9 versus A1 video in, in firmware version 1, I think, and, and now there's even more stuff. Things like pre-capture, come on! Things like high-res zoom, give it to me! I mean, there's so much stuff. Uh, um, the 2.3 crop. Uh, the 2.3 crop. says dice. That's a really good point. Yep. Uh, at, at 4K 120. That's, love it. That's we we love it. We, we both... I love it. I discovered it, yeah. and I told Joe, and Joe's like, what? You know, all of our lenses suddenly go out another two and a half almost. I mean, yeah, no, yep. uh, it's just smart. It's just smart. It's just like, let's just do it, you know? Yeah, let's just do it. Um, what was the quick... Uh, so getting back to the SD card. Oh, the SD, SD card, card, yes. Did you see how I tried to avoid that? No, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, look, this really this really is a D850 moment. Check it out. Here it is. There's, this is a D850. I brought it, and you can see that it has... You can't see. I know you can't, but... We all know that it has a CF Express Type B slash XQD slash uh, SD slot. That's what this camera has. And 
there would be a lot of hand wringing, I'm sure, as to whether to go in this direction or not. Obviously, the the pros of it is is let, let's say you're in a situation like this and you're shooting and you just want to put stuff straight into your laptop. It's got an SD port. I've never seen a laptop with a CF Express uh, port on it. They don't exist. Yeah. So there's that. SD is ubiquitous. You can buy it at your local convenience store. So convenience is why it makes sense. Uh, it's a Type 2, which runs at 312 megabytes. I've, I've just purchased a, a, one, one of those SD because I never, I never owned any fast ones. I never needed them. I've just purchased one, and when I get my Z8, I will test how, how far will it go. But I'm sure we'll still, get, we'll still be able to shoot 20 frames per second raw and just fill the buffer, and then it'll gently go onto it. And I'm, I'm guessing we'll even be able to get some lower end 8K codecs. So it, it might not actually be that big a difference. And again, I would go to use case. Mm. What are most people's use cases? Uh, so, you know, if, if you like the sort of people that back up are more like, say, you know, the sorts of things that you really need to back up is, say, the work commercial work that I do, so uh, for advertising agencies and so on. We are not shooting high speed, so it'll never be a problem. If you're a birder, well, you know, it, it, there's not, there's, there's, unless you're working for National Geographic, which is a very small subset of the market, you know, if you, if you miss a few shots or something happens, it's, it's not the end of the world. What's the speed of the, XQ, the old XQD? Uh, they were like four four hundred. So 400. They, yeah, they were four hundred. So it's about the same speed. They're three hundred. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. a little bit faster. Yeah, but I mean, I, I do a bit of birding, and I'm and I'm still happy using an XQD card because I don't want to spray no. sixty shots in a in no. a burst. Yeah, I want to take eight shots, twelve shots, yeah. whatever it might be. Exactly. So, so um, yeah, okay. Another question uh, that I'm uh, uh, hold on a second. Ambrose has asked. A Welcome, Ambrose. Great to have you here. And, and you did speak about this before, but okay. perhaps not to a great extent. No. How many photos can you take on a single battery of the Z8? Uh, yeah. And the different styles that would... Uh, that would okay, so, so off the top of my head, I think Sepa said 330, but then Sepa says something like 700 for the Z9, whereas I've gotten two and a half, three thousand. 3,000, right? Yes. So Sepa is an unusual number. So if we're to extrapolate that SEPA number, it might be something like a 1,000 or 1,200. I didn't, I didn't actually go out and shoot that many shots. Uh, and when you shoot 8K video as well, obviously that drains the battery quite fast. So again, as soon as I get my Z8, I will start testing all of this sort of stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But thanks for asking. Uh, just going through some questions. Yes, questions. There's a lot, lot of uh, comments coming in. Great. If you've got a question, put a Q at the front. Yeah, Madhouse is. Uh, we speculated about this before, uh, that Mad Madhouse has suggested maybe the second USB C can be used as a solid state drive. Yeah, Roy. Well, that's right. Sorry, who's asked this or who uh, said Ma that? Uh, Ma Madhouse. Madhouse. A absolutely, Madhouse. We already know that uh, certain camera manufacturers do it. Um, it's a USB-C port. They do it through USB-C. It's just a matter of whether they end up making the decision to do it, I, I suppose, if the hardware can do it. Now, the trailer for this campaign, for this camera, made out it was video-centric, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I don't know. Um, the question that I would ask is, though, when we have such high capacity to record internally, do we even need it? Do we even need it? So that's the only question I would ask. And right now we have the capacity to, for example, to get an Atomos Ninja, mm -hmm. plug it in, and you can record. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what codecs come out of the HDMI into a Ninja, but you, you can record that way. And I believe that I had worked out that you can record internally onto the card mm -hmm. and you can record to the Ninja right. at the same time. So you are essentially getting a backup that way. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did that. So, you know, 
the work the workflow that I could I could imagine that yes. uh, recording onto a, an external drive would be you take that drive you you pop it straight into the computer yes. and you've got an entire project on the drive without having to transfer data. Absolutely. So so in, so in if you're a wedding uh, photo a videographer or if, if you're doing multiple projects often, you might just have 10 or 15 or 20 different drives yep. that that drive is for that project and so on and so forth. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but really in the end, is that that difference to whipping out your two terabyte or your one terabyte CF Express? And I've got that beautiful mm. dock that I bought from SanDisk, and you're just popping it in just like you are in a hard drive. But are you? Uh, but but you're not keeping the whole project on that that CF. Oh, so what? That's what what you didn't say there is you can edit. That's what. Now that's we what I mean. we you could we yeah of course we, we theory, can. Theory, theoretically could do that. But the, but the cost of the CF Express mm. cards is gets prohibitive compared to SSD. SSD. Sure. Yeah. I think I looked at that recently and they're about twice or three times. So it's not not that big a difference. But sure, look, you can keep whittling and whittling use cases down to, yes, you're right, but there's four people that want to do that in the world. Okay, maybe it's more than four, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, yes. Any more cues? Have we got any more cues uh, there? How long have we been going for? Uh, Paul McBen has just asked, uh, he, he says, I suppose D lenses are not supported. Well... Across uh, the whole Z line, uh, all the D lenses are generally supported, unless they're an old screwdriver lens, just with the F to Z, Z adapter. So. What he said, and but I would say <laughs> they are supported, yeah. right? They yeah. just don't drive the autofocus. Yeah, if that's it, right. Yeah, so you can still use them. Yeah. You can still get your aperture ring and dial your aperture ring. And do you know what else happens, Joe? With those D lenses, when you whack them on your Z8 or your Z9 with that incredible IBIS, you, get, you, get, in, you get incredible IBIS. And, and do you know what else happens? Focus peaking. <laughs> That's right. Not and focus peaking, focus zooming or whatever. What's it called? I don't even know what it's, it's called. It's, it, you, can, you can punch into 100% or yeah. more. Or more. You can go 200 and you can get critical focus unlike you could ever get on your DSLR. So and, that, and that's why I... You buy have, this stuff. I've, I've been buying too many <laughs> He's old, addicted. Yeah, 40, 50-year-old F-mount lenses. Yeah. And they're fantastic on, on these high-end bodies. Having said that... Can we tell a story? <laughs> Joe finally got frustrated and he bought the new 105 MC and he loves it. It is. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely loved it. Okay, any more questions in there about the Z8? We would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, Craig, Seeper is always bananas. I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, now, uh, Hector has asked, with a high-speed sync with no mechanical shutter, are there any issues with that? High-speed sync with no... Okay, so I've, I've toyed with that a couple of times, and I didn't find any issues, but you've reminded me that I really want to make a video about it. Should I make a video about it? You let me know in the comments right there. So yeah, no, I, I've used it. It worked. Um, I'm pretty confident my good friend, Seth Miranda, he uses it. I've, oh, excuse me, I've heard of other people using it. You yeah. know, I think high-speed sync is fine. Uh, did you get to play with the new uh, format that they've rolled into this? The uh, the H, H Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So... Um, the only thing that would open the files was Apple's preview, which you can't really edit in. So right. capture one. So I, I wasn't able to use the raw files and I wasn't able to use HEIF yet. So we're waiting for capture one and Adobe, even Adobe wouldn't open them, which is weird. Are you saying you couldn't, the raw files? The raw, yeah, because the, the, they're all different. Yeah. So couldn't couldn't open them in capture one. Couldn't open them. So obviously Nikon will presumably ship their software sometime soon. It'll yep. get an update and the Z8, probably before the Z8 comes out, ships, and we'll be able to open those raw files that way. But right now, Capture One uh, Adobe Lightroom does not support the Z8 in either raw files or HEIF. And HEIF is interesting. It'd be interesting to see what that extra info is. essentially a, a JPEG, like a compressed file format. I'm not sure why we need another one on top of HE, a, a, HE Star, which is phenomenal. Great to have it in a cheaper camera. Um, it, 
it might be for photojournalists to get, yeah. the, get the images straight off. Well, it's a good point. It's baked, it's finished. But they are more editable, though, right? Yeah. Anyway, it's yep. it's a bit of a standard. It's becoming a standard. It's not a standard like JPEG, though. Yeah. Not as universal. Beth Eckstein, who's just, just arrived. G'day, Beth. G'day, Beth. How are you? Is asking, does the Z8 have a sensor cover? As the Z9 does. So does. It so does, and that is one of my favourite features. Check out my video that I, <laughs> the other video, go, go to the to the video part, not the live part of my channel. There's a whole video, a lot of detail about the Z8. I've gone, I've spent some quality time with the Z8 and uh, lots of info in there, which includes the sensor shield. But yes, the sensor shield's there, and I think it's a phenomenal idea. Love it. Uh, uh, Christoph Lowy says, there's no problem with high-speed sync with my Z9. So it should be the same with the Z8. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Absolutely. To the best of my understanding, the internals of these cameras, besides things like heat sinks, because there's no vertical grip, et cetera, are the same. So we should be getting the same results with things like that. Absolutely. Uh, Donovan mentions that uh, Ted Forbes said he was able to use Lightroom when uh, to open the Z8 RAW file. Oh. So Lightroom. Lightroom. Uh, so, okay. Well, I, I've misled everybody there. I've tried to open them in Photoshop thinking that the Adobe RAW would just work yeah. with Photoshop and or... But it's it's possible that I was trying earlier than Ted. That's possible. I don't know when Ted did it. He might have done it yesterday. I was trying last week. So, yeah, might not have been available last week. Interesting, though. He also might have a beta copy. Ted, Ted is way more well-known. Adobe might send him stuff. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to ask another couple of questions. Yes. Uh, so. Cheers, Ambrose. I'm, st I'm struggling here because I've got a, a few things I'm curious about. Where does this, where does this Z8 now fit uh, in relation to, uh, let's say, a red camera or something that is just dedicated to film? It's funny you should bring up red. <laughs> Uh, look, I've never used a red camera. I've been on set, and actually recently I worked on a commercial about a month ago where they had a red, but I don't, I don't know how they're different. I think they have slightly more dynamic range, and that's what you pay $80,000 for instead of, you know, $5,000 or whatever, depending on where you are if you're in Canada. Um, but beyond that, I don't think there's a, I don't, I don't think they offer much more. It's no. like there's still 4K, there's still 5K, there's still 6 and 8K. Um, they shoot the same sort of frame rates. I think they maybe have a 120 FPS 8K camera now. And like I said, I think they might have another stop or two of dynamic range, but we'd have to look into that. So I really think if you're, let's say you're Kevin Smith, who's the director who made Clerks. Do you remember that film, Clerks? G'day, Kev. G'day, Kevin. If you happen to be watching, I don't know why you would be, but if you are. <laughs> of course he is. And, you know, I don't know, it's like 1992 or something, and he's... Drop he's, a comment, Kev. Yeah, drop... Be good to have you on the next string. And we can talk about, I don't know, the Superman script that you wrote. We can talk about <laughs> Clerks 2. I think there's a Clerks 3 that everybody's... Sorry, Kevin, I've heard it wasn't so good. <laughs> Someone let me know in the comments below. I haven't seen it. I can't comment. Clerks 2 was great. Um, he's done all sorts of stuff. Silent Bob. It's Silent Bob. That was his really? character. Silent Bob was the name of Kevin. He wrote himself into his own movie, but he just didn't speak. Anyway, I'm off topic. Uh, let's say you're Kevin Smith and you want to shoot Clerks. And I'm pretty sure he probably shot it on 16 mil film back in 1992. Mm -hmm. Very expensive because you've got to buy the film, process the film. I, I, I was making films back then. I know how expensive it was. This camera will give you, you know, 20 times the quality and all you have to do is buy the camera and a couple of cards and off you're going and you can be the next Kevin Smith. Just get yourself a good script. And everybody needs a silent bob. <laughs> everybody. So, um, no, uh, and this camera will let you do that. You know, you don't need a red, right? Yep. yep. And, and look... Uh, Madhouse says that the Z8 and Z9 rival the red, and that's why red was scared. Well, sure. They were yeah. scared, and yeah. uh, they made it all go away because, of course, if Nikon had won, then they would have lost the capacity to charge royalties and so on. So yeah. it was, I, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I think it was better for them to just 
do the what, what's the line out of Star Wars? The, these are not the droids that you're looking for thing. Yep. That's essentially what they did. I so, think. Jonathan De La Rosa, yes. and I like saying, he's, Hi, a, Jonathan. he's, he's Italian. I am. Yeah. De La Rosa. De La Rosa. Okay. He says uh, that, that Jared Polin also said that uh, opening raw files in Lightroom, oh, it did work in Lightroom. Okay. As well. so, yeah, great. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, yep. so I, I, I have raw files. So I we will, can play around with them. Yeah, yeah. I, I will do a video ASAP with my raw files because the files in my video, which you should go watch, thank you very much, are all the pictures you see are JPEGs. They're, they're from JPEG. Yeah, let's. So uh, we've got uh, Jonathan De La Rosa. Right. He's Mexican. Yes. I'm actually getting some something delivered from Mexico in a few weeks' time. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that down, down the track. Okay. Uh, and I to Mexico. Yeah. So, Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And good day, Raymond, as well. Okay. Let's see. Ah, uh, there you go, John. Well, thanks for letting us know. The Adobe update that happened this week would be the reason. And I was looking last week. So yep. that's super cool. See, there's always a logical answer, isn't there? <laughs> have you got true. more? Have you got more questions? I, I'm I'm out of questions. But that's fine. Any uh, any other comments you you want to yeah, add about Z8? Yeah, well, um, I, I'm I'm just super excited that the fact that this sort of level of technology, which mm. was super exciting and inspiring in the in the Z9, and you hear some people say, "Oh, this is this tech is now a year and a half old," so blah blah blah, and I'm 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 kind of confused by that because it's still the best tech in the market. But they've, they've no, actually no, no, no. They've, they've let's, improved the tech let, let's, because they've made it from this big to this big. Well, true, but let's just sit on that for this. It's still the best tech in the market. Okay, should I say it one more time? It's still the best tech in the market. No, no one's done anything about it. So, yeah. if you want to buy the best, you can still buy it. I, I'm not. I'm not. Canon. Canon haven't done anything better than the R5 in three years. Sony it, haven't done anything better than the A1 in one and a half, two years. But not just so that. So why, why, no, but wait, why should Nikon do something more in one and a half? I, I don't get the logic. But so many people have been saying, I'd love to get a Z9. Yeah. I can't afford it. Yeah. It's Boom. just, it's a more like affordable Z9. Swing the door open. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and all the people that couldn't fit the Z9 into their bag. Oh, their bag. Oh, my goodness. So funny. It's, it's funny. The, the what Z, a relief. The Z9 is really not that big. I, I, I'll, I'll repeat something that's probably been forgotten because the Z9 came out so long ago, but the Z9 is actually quite a lot smaller than a D5 and a D6. Um, and I've got, so, I've got so many different camera bags and fits in totally fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I also think what's super exciting about this release is to see that we've got another XP7 yep. that's more affordable. Like... Uh, 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 People can complain, but it's it's still cheaper than a Z9, right? You can still get into this state-of-the-art sensor, stack sensor, a sensor. And now I had a thought. I was I had thoughts at strange times. I had a thought when I was closing the boot of my car. And rather than me tell that story and forget the thought, what was the thought? Oh, yes. The thought was, again, people complain about video, right? There's all these people that go, oh, I don't, I don't, want, I don't, want, I don't want to pay for video. What do you think video requires of the sensor? If you're going to say, my camera, it's going to do lots of video. It's going to have a much more robust and long run time, right? So mm. what that, okay, so my extrapolation is you make a sensor for video, it has to have a longer uptime, a longer run, a longer lifetime yep. because you've got it on and running more, yep. right? So for photographers, don't care about video, fine. Don't care about video, but you've now got a sensor that's going to last even longer. Yep. Because it's, they've made and it's got a much higher duty cycle. Is the engineering term? That's what I wanted to get from you. Duty cycle, and then what? Do, what do we do? We get rid of mechanical shutters, so that's not going to blow up. Yep. You know, whenever I saw the spec of a new D5 or a D4, and you you see the shutter cycle, three hundred and fifty thousand actuations, and if you're a birder, you get through that in what a week. <laughs> <laughs> but you get my point. Um, I think I think a birder should test for us, like literally, how many shots <laughs> can they take? 
Like just like every day they go, they you go, you know and, they go and sit with their Z9 and they just sit there for you know an hour going. Cool. Okay, I'm 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 going to ask. Can how it's can getting you, late. How Are we losing it? Many, Let us know if we're losing it. How many shutter? How can you tell how many shutters uh, shutter releases you've had yeah. on a Z9? Do you have to upload it onto a? Um, Do you know? Funnily enough, preview the Apple software so, somewhere in there. It That's was just right. it was just written. So what oh. we should do is ask who has the most shutter yes. releases with a Z9? Yes. Is it going to be a birder? Yes. A wedding photographer? Oh, nice. Or someone that left the camera in their bag with the shutter oh, that's been accidentally I pressed? I know, but that would still only go for like three or 4,000. Yeah, maybe. but what if but what if you put it in the Oh, cover? they do it every time. That's right. Yeah, they never learn from their mistakes. <laughs> Why do I have 4,000 black photos? Because <laughs> that's, it's that's in right. the bottom of my bag yep. with, with the lens cap on. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. It is because, an exciting time, yeah. Uh, because now Nikon are going to be pouring more resources into firmware updates for the XP7 because there's a few cameras now with XP7. Yeah. And guaranteed there's, there's probably two or three other cameras in the works that Nikon are, are going to be pushing forward with because this is what they do. So even for the owners of Z9s, this is a very exciting time because they share the same... Uh, the same sensor, they share the same um, uh, the processing, same processors, same pipeline, the whole lot. So anyone that owns a Z9 that, that thinks, wow, I, I've i missed out somehow or on. How did you miss out? Because you had a year and a half longer to play with it. So we I know. We didn't miss out. I didn't miss out. But not that. But through the release of the Z8, it's yeah. kind of confirming that we're going to get, hopefully, and I'm expecting so, we're going to get, and I just hit the mic. Yeah. We're going to get. He didn't drop the mic. He hit the mic. More firmware updates. We're going to get um, more features that uh, that are that are perfected and 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 corrected. And I, I think that this is just an extremely exciting time for Nikon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the industry as a whole, because everyone's now going to have to push uh, to keep up. Let's see if they want to. Well, you know, I mean. I I tell you, it's just just off topic, just for a second, but it's really interesting to see how Sony and Canon are just releasing a lot of entry level cameras, mm. a lot. So why are their resources going there? I don't know. If anyone has any theories, please write them in the comments. I'd be I'd be interested in that. But but it's interesting. Like you just have this flurry of entry level cameras, and where Nikon is just you know quiet achiever giving us this yep. high end state of the art stuff. And they will trickle it down. Like there's no, like I can't, I can't wait until an XP7 is running like a 24 megapixel camera. It will fly. Can you imagine that? It's got to yeah. do half the work. What, what else will the camera do? Levitate by itself? It'll maglev. That's what it'll do. How so, exciting! Uh, Roy Bixby has said that uh, he's impressed with how reliable his old mechanical shutters were. His D4. As close to a million actuations. There you on go. It. A million uh, actuations. That is how good Nikon's engineering is, and I love how conservative their estimates are. And we've seen that with their IBIS. I reckon their IBIS is better than the six stops they say, um, especially if you take your blood pressure meds. That really helps the VR, don't you think? So, Roy, are you going to sell the um, the D4 that you've got and just <laughs> just, <laughs> just say it like new? <laughs> yeah. Um, now, Mike, Mike, Mike Norton just asked. Uh, impressions between Z9 and Z8 pulling black or highlight details the same. So it is absolutely my belief that the engine, the pipeline and everything is the same. And if there's anything that I would expect Nikon engineers to do over time is to tweak it to the positive. So. Let's imagine it is the same sensor and it is the same pipeline, but they've had time to work on the algorithm. So they're not giving us more, they're not stating more dynamic range or they're not stating more anything. But if they've had time in, in the 18 months since the Z9 was released to, to tweak things to the better, then maybe they have. But I, I, haven't, I haven't been able to pick pixel peep raw files yet, so I don't know, but I believe it'll be the same. Or maybe I'm gonna say better. If they've tweaked it, it'd be like a imperceptible one percent sort of thing. I, I just think that how they'd roll if they can, because all of this is epic mathematics, right? There's just epic mathematics going on here, and 
when you've got to get something like this out, you it's it's a bit like editing a video. You get it to a point, you go, yeah. it's awesome. We could spend more time just polishing, 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 and, and eking even more out of this, you know, because it's all about voltages. It's all about really interesting stuff when you start to look into how sensors actually work yep. uh, and how you how you filter out noise and all sorts of stuff like that. It, it's possible that they can tweak and rewrite these algorithms to get even better and we just get these minor, minor improvements, but they are actually improvements. So who knows? I don't know. Definitely the same or better is what I would think. James has asked an in interesting question. Yes. I have a Z9 and a D850. Oh, yes. I kept the D850 and most of the F lenses. Planning on getting a Z8. Should I keep the D850 and, and do slide and negative duplication with it? So keep the D850 for slide negative duplication or should you just move it on? What should you, What are you going to do? You've got... You got seventy five cameras, <laughs> <laughs> two of which are D eight fifties. Seventy four. Seventy four. Oh, I don't know how many I've got. Um, I, 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 that would just come down to budget. If you can afford to keep your D eight fifty, it's a beautiful camera. It's a lovely artifact. Keep it. If you can't afford to keep it, um, the Z eight. We we know we know from looking at the DXO charts mm. that the D eight fifty comes in at I can't remember. It was like thirteen point four. Yeah. And, and the Z7 comes in at like 13.3 and the Z9 comes in at like 13.2 or something, or it might be 14 point, I can't remember. So these things are all within not even 1% or something like that of each other. Yeah, it's less than one. Is it like, yeah, it'd be less than 1% if it's 14. So 14.8 is the dynamic range. Right. Of the, of the D850. Yeah. And so yeah. the differences are so minor i wouldn't be keeping the d850 because it's got that micro extra dynamic range so it's just a matter of how much whether you love it and you just want to keep it as an artifact that, that's part of my problem i love them as just artifacts as, as history they're part of my history because these things have made money for me over the years and i love them and they remind me of the stories and the adventures that i've had so it's not just about taking photos it's about all sorts of stuff any more questions we got there uh let's go back um, Roy never sells. Roy collects. Yes, I understand, Roy. I, I am a bit the same. Audio is jumpy. My apologies. Uh, um, we're getting good levels here, so I apologise. It might have been me playing with my mic here. I might apologise for that. I will, I will not play with it anymore. But thanks for letting us know. Let me know again, Sing Cryptic, if the audio is still bad. Donkey Bizzle. Donkey, I, donkey, donkey Bizzle. I'm with you. The 200 to 600. When's that coming out? Well, let me get my crystal ball out. One second. <laughs> Wait, it's down here. It might be down here with my Gray's hat. Wait a second. Crystal ball, where are you? Oh, not my Gray's hat. Uh, no. Hold it. Almost. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, what the crystal ball says is... That lens has been on the roadmap. Do you remember? Because you're more interested. But I reckon it's 2021. Yeah, about 35 years. 35 years, <laughs> give or take 33 years. <laughs> it's, it's felt like it's been on the roadmap for a long time. Yeah. Um, so. I'm pretty confident it's the lens that's been on the roadmap longest that hasn't come out. Yes. I'm pretty confident. Like, there aren't many lenses left that we've been told are coming mm. to come. I think there's like the 35-1-2. We don't know it's a 1-2, but it's on the same line. I think that's a fait accompli at this point. Um, we certainly won't be getting a 35, I don't know, 4.5, will we? No. <laughs> Surely in 2023, we're going to see that lens come out. Yeah, so bottom line on all of that is it's due. Um, the Z8 would be a good camera to match it with. I'll, I'll be pre-ordering one of those. Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe's going to be first in line for that. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this year. I'm hoping sooner than you know the end of the year. But I don't know. I don't know. Soon. Let's hope. Think, let's do a group finger crossing, and maybe the universe will be able to help us with that. Yep. Any more questions in there, young man? Uh, not that I can see. Getting Z8 as a backup. 
Yes. That, well, that's exactly what, We need more crystal balls. Thank, thank you. Yes, I, I, I agree, Donkey. Can't have enough crystal balls. Get Off My Lawn has said that uh, he wants the, uh, the Z8 control layout but doesn't need the autofocus and speed. That, or he doesn't want to have to pay for that. Yeah. Well, uh, do you like do you like the way it is on the Z6 and the Z7? Because it's pretty similar. Mm. Um, You'll have to answer that, and then we can go from there, I suppose. Madhouse says that uh, it'd be nice uh, if Nikon makes cinematic lenses. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I reckon you and I talked about that. I think I talked about it in my. Talked about it in something, some stream, somewhere. Oh, with um, Frames and Baron, mm. I talked about the idea of them potentially making Z. So I had this idea that the, the name Z is now at the front of every lens. Yep. And we didn't have that with the F mount. Mm. They weren't called the, you know, it wasn't actually officially part of the name. It's officially part of the name. So Z, 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 Z. Well, why is it there? Because maybe they're going to make a, another mount. Maybe. Maybe, why not? I mean, you're an optics company and let's, you could sell them to Red. Wouldn't that be funny? Maybe that was part of the... Well, maybe what he's referring to is to cine lenses in general. I, I agree with that too. Um, yeah, yes. that, that'd be nice. Yeah. The thing is, is that these Z lenses are so capable. They're, they're really pretty good as they are. I yeah. agree. And they're making them not focus breathe optically. Yeah. They're doing all the right things. And if you're Joe or if you're the people who made the Joker... They want to buy 50-year-old Nikon lenses and use them as cine lenses and pull focus on them and all that. So yeah. Nikon have a massive range of lenses that you can draw from if you want the look. But also the control that you have over these lenses with regard to changing uh, your aperture, uh, with regard to changing all these things, it yeah. happens seamlessly. Yeah. So true. the argument for having just dedicated cine lenses that are de-clicked and all of this type of stuff it's it's a it's not quite a dated concept, but I think there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of filmmakers that are going to be quite happy with just the Z range of lenses. Well, nudge nudge, wink wink. If I had a spare million dollars, I'd be I'd go and make a feature film. So if anybody wants to help me do that, then just I don't know. What do you do here? You, the hyperpay business or whatever it's. I don't even know what it's called. The coffee fund. Yeah, hit the coffee fund. We're trying to get to a million. We're going to make a feature film. We're going to prove that you can make a feature film, get it in cinemas, maybe even get Matt Damon in it. It'd be Matt Irwin and Matt Damon and Joe and anyone else. And we can do it. But no, it's a good point. Yeah. I, I, I think we could shoot a feature film and no one would know that it was shot. They wouldn't or would not know whether it was shot on a Z camera or not. A Z8. Let's do it. Let's make a, let's make a feature. Any more questions? Because uh, what we will do is uh, contemplate winding things up shortly. It is now heading towards 1 a.m. here in happy Australia land. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Excited about the Z8. Thank you, Rob Fuzz. It's great to have you on board. Um, Z73 Future. Sure. Well, I've always said, I've always said, and when the debate was going about what the Z8 might be, I've always said that the the next Z7 is most likely to be that higher megapixel but slower camera, and it might even have a mechanical shutter and so on, you know, for landscape, portrait, still life, all those sort of things. So um, I really do think Nikon will return to a four-year cycle because that's just enough, yep. and I I think so. So I don't know, but if, if they do, it's next year. And what's it going to be? don't know but it'll probably be more than it is today so that might I, and i don't think they'd make a I, i'd be surprised i'd personally be surprised if there was a fifth 45.7 megapixel camera i would be surprised but you say something interesting in there you Do say I, the I? z73 could be potentially be a slower type camera yeah with the hardware that's being rolled out into these cameras today yeah the xb7 being 10 times faster than the xb6 yeah uh, it's it's not going to be a, the Z73 if and when it does come out won't necessarily be a slow camera. Well, so what we don't have yet is a stacked BSI 61 megapixel sensor. It doesn't That's exist true. yet. Yep. The pipeline, it's mm. actually even so, it's only 13% bigger on one side, but then it's 
on the other side. Yeah. So the files end up being almost twice the size somehow magically. Yeah, big bottleneck. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and, and, a, and a Z7 III doesn't need to shoot 20 frames per second raw. You, you buy the Z8, Z8 for it or the Z9. So yeah. I think it's, de- when I say slow, I just think it's, it's deliberately not fast. I yeah. don't mean it's, oh, isn't yeah. that crap, it's slow. It's just like, I mean, it's not like the, the Z7 shoots 10 frames a second or something. That's great. You know, it's, isn't it funny that none of us cared? It, like, it, it's like 10, 12 frames a second a few years ago. That was blisteringly fast. You know, my, when I say a few, maybe like six years ago. My D200 from 20 years ago or whatever it was shot eight, seven or eight frames a second. See, It was fantastic. There, there you go. Took a lot of my best photos back then. Oh, Ray, thank you very much for, for contributing to the feature film fund. I appreciate that very much, Mr. <laughs> Raymond Parker. We are going to get this thing up and running. And we might shoot some of it in Happy Canada. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, Yamin Sen says uh, he's asking if the, uh, the battery, uh, the vertical grip is any more comfortable than, uh, than the Z7 II grip. Do you know? Uh, I, I don't own the Z7 II grip. I have the Z7 grip, the original one that didn't have any buttons on it that people loved. And it's more comfortable than that one. It's it, To be honest, it's about as comfortable as the Z9, give or take a little bit. It's probably not quite as comfortable, but it's very similar. So, yeah, no, I think I've, I think they've done a good job there. He also, uh, he also asked in the next sentence, would you uh, uh, recommend... And a Z9 or a Z8? He's asking that question. It's probably use case dependent as um, well. Oh, he's talking about the integrated grip. He's, uh, no, the integrated grip on the... Thanks for, about the hat. The integrated grip on the Z9 is the most comfortable thing that I've ever used. It's unbelievable. I've owned the D2X. I've owned the F5, the D2X, the D3, the D3S, the D4. I've owned all those cameras. The Z9 is the most comfortable. And there's... The, the first reason is down here the was where the focus uh, mechanism was in a DSLR. And in a mirrorless camera, it's not there. So that little bump has gone. It is the most comfortable camera I've ever held by far. And that's, that's another reason why you buy the incorporated vertical grip Z9 instead of the Z8 because it is the most comfortable. The Z8 is very close, but it's slightly different. It's not, it's not as perfect. This is perfect. It has been engineered to be perfect. That's how it is. Uh, yeah. Well, we did a, I did a count. Of, we were out shooting. It, last time we were out shooting, I think we did a count of how many vertical shots. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, portrait versus landscape style shots we took. It was about 50-50. So even for me, a, a Z9 is still going to be the choice because it's so much more comfortable in every orientation. Absolutely. Yep. Hey, make sure you hit the like button, everybody. It really helps the video get out there. I should have been mentioning that the whole time. I'm just not not so good at my live stream vernacular, am I? Plus, it's almost 1 a.m. here. Um, yes. Thank you, Yemen. All good. Thank you, Matt Lay. Yeah, it's, it is a nice hat, isn't it? <laughs> I, I only bring it out on very special occasions, like when the Z8 comes out. Ain't that... Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rob Fuzz. Appreciate that. Uh, totally agree, Roy. The ergonomics and colour science is where it's at. No. No, James. The grip for the Z8 does not use the Z9 and D6 and whatever batteries. It only uses ENEL15 batteries, of which most of us have some. So it's a, it's a, it takes two of them, and if you weren't here before, I reckon it'll run about 80. Those two batteries will give you about 80-ish, 80 to 90, somewhere in there, uh, the power of the 18-style battery. Yep. And those batteries in Australian dollars, the ENEL 15Cs, are about $100 compared to the $350-odd yeah. for the ENEL 18 that the Z9s take. So um, quite a lot cheaper, cheaper as well. Yeah, good point, Matt. Um, Seth and Richie and I, we've been trying to work out a time for the three of us to get together where we were really trying to get Richie to 
today, but of course, I think he was busy doing a, a live stream for Nick on Europe and Seth's busy doing things as well. So we will get together, but it might be it might be in a few days or next week. It's 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 quite hard. the timing is difficult with Australia, New York, and London. It's literally like it's it's for one of us. It's always like one o'clock in the morning. So um, anyway, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah. All right. Well, um, I thank you very much, Jim, Roy, Raymond, old Ohio angler. For everyone who didn't watch in earlier just a suggestion when this ends go yes exactly right let's repeat that um please please everybody go check out greys of westminster our fellow lovely love the loveliest people in the nikon universe the greys of westminster people not only are they in the nikon they are the nikon universe <laughs> they are nikon only they are nikon dna through and through please go check them out so thank you for rem reminding me about that um uh, where have you gone? Old, old Ohio angler. Much appreciated. Thank you, John D. Thank you, Raymond. All right. Well, we, I think we will say good night to you all. It's just about to roll over to 1am here down under. Joe, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks, it's, uh, it's, uh, for those who have any idea about Joe's journey, it's a big deal that he's sitting next to me here tonight. And uh, so thanks for being here. My and thanks for maybe a lot of you don't know but joe and i quite often go out and shoot at this time of night because we we just love the light and and um also there's not a lot of people around so it's kind of safer <laughs> as well you know simple things like that and yep. we would get out on our scooters and whatever else and uh, yes joe's got some uh, wheels of fury have you you don't we don't have to tell anyone yet but have any photos come through yet oh not yet okay not tomorrow yet. Right. photos oh, coming tomorrow. tomorrow okay all right so, we will reveal all soon. Exciting times. In a rip-roaring, screeching episode called Wheels of Fury Part 3. <laughs> that, that's a clue right I'll, there. I'll write that down. Wheels of Fury. Of Fury. Yeah. Part, part three. 3. All right, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. The Z, Z8 is amazing. Go down to your local camera store. If you've never played with a Z9, Get a Z8 in your hand. Put on put on an 85 mil lens or something like that. Just feel just feel it. Feel how good it feels. Any last words, Joe? Before we say au revoir. Just exciting times. Enjoy whatever camera you have in hand. If good you're not going to pick up a Z8 or a Z9 or any other camera, get out there and keep on shooting and share those experiences with people around you. So that's all I've got to say. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, and check out the episode where I'm on the scooter and Joe's on the skateboard <laughs> following me in real time. That's one of my favorites. And we're going to recreate that. We're going to do something like that again as, With, as, as in, soon as the wheels of, Fury wheels of Fury turn up. All Sounds right. Good. All right, everybody. It's been amazing. Take care and we will see you very soon. Bye.